Բարև ձեզ սրելի հայնակիցներ, մենք սկսում ենք հասպիս և գրեյս շոն և ինչպես մենք որ նշել էինք սրանից առաջ, մենք այսօր ունենք շատ մի կարևոր հյուր, որի մեզ կտեղեկացնի շատ կարևոր տեղեկություններ, պ ձեր երեխաներին, եթե մեծը հասակնեն են մեզ ընգտրում, ձեր երեխաներին և բոլորին և խնդրեիք, որ նրանք միանային մեզ, որովհետև մենք ունենք շատ բավականին կարևոր տեղեկություններ։ Իհարկե այսօր վաշոն կլինի անգլերինով, կանի որ մեր կասենք, որ ինչի մասին է ինք խոսում, երկե այն մարդ կանց համար, ովքեր որ անգլեր են չեն հասկանում, իսկ այն մարդիկ, ովքեր որ անգլեր են հասկանում են, խնդրում ենք, որ թարգմանեք ձեր սիրելիների։ Այսօրվա� Պարոն բեկրը ուրեմ են իրենց, մի կիչ խոսեմ իրենց վրմի մասին, իրենց վրմը կարուցվել է 1929 նթվականին դիվիտ կամրան ռիտ իկ կալստր, որը իրենց մեծ պապիկ պապն է, և այդպիսով նրանք շառնակել են իրենց աշխատանքը, և նաև նրանք ողգին են և նրանք բոլորը իրարու բարեկամներ են։ Եվ Areas of Practice-ը, որ այսօր Mr. Becker-ը նրանք աշխատում են, դա State Planning, այսինքն State Planning-ը դա նշանակում է մի բան, երբ որ դուք ունեք ունեցվածք և կալվածք բիզնեսի հետ կապված պլանավորումներ, Qualified Retirement Plans, ձեր Retirement Planների մասին, եթե տեղակություններ ունեք, պարոն բեկրը կարող է ձեզ ոգնել, Business and Tax Planning, գործերի և թակսերի պլանինգի համար, և Litigation Practice, որը նորից սա կլինի կալվածքի հետ կապված։ Մենք հիմա կուզեինք բարի եթեր մաղթենք մեր հյուրին։ Հայ, Ադամ, հավ այու, դենք եմ որ կամինք տու արշողում։ Հայ, արբի, դենք եմ որ հավինք մի անձ։ Ես են անոր տու հավ այու, այն ու when I told you that you're going to be on my show and you said, yes, I was so happy because um, to have someone like you, because, you know, you have your areas of practice, it's very broad and it's, you know, it's, it's corresponds with what I do with hospice and, you know, with my clients. Um, and I know that, you know, we need help, um, your expertise, and today you will tell us more about. Uh, but um, I know I read, I just said a little bit about your areas of practice, but um, I wanted to Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Սերելի բարիկամներ, մինչե որ ես պարոն ադամին թողն է, որ նա խոսի, մի բան էլ կուզեի ասեի, որ պարոն ադամը ինչի համար ես նրան ընտրեցի և ինչի նա նորից իմ սերտին շատ մոտիկ մի ազնավորություններ, � Եվ այնտեղ նա բավականին հայերի հետ էր հանդիպել և նա շատ սիրում է հայերին և ասում էր, որ հայերի ինչքան լավ ժողովուրդ են և ինչպես լավ էին վերաբերվել նրանց հետ և կիսել էին իրենց հացը. I just told him about your missionary when you went to Rostov and you met a lot of Armenians. Um, so, Adam, can you just tell us a little bit more, just, just in, you know, about your um, practice and then we can just talk about um, the areas of practice that you're... You're in. I'd be happy to. I uh, practice in estate planning. I think I heard you say that. Yes. Business and tax planning, and our law firm does a lot of work with uh, probate, post-death administration, you know, clients who at the end of life need help making decisions, putting together the paperwork, and then after they've passed away, mm -hmm. uh, we're there to help the family make distributions, settle the estates. Uh, I started practicing in Arizona, actually. Oh, okay. And uh, my grandfather had started the firm that I work at 
Uh, but I was in Arizona practicing at a larger firm, doing the exact same kind of work, and an uncle called one day and said, would you like to come to California? And of course, my uh, wife, who's from California, said, let's go check mm -hmm. it out and mm -hmm. see what it's mm -hmm. like. And uh, we came back. I've been here for 10 years, and I love it. And I've been practicing that type of law ever since. Wonderful. Uh, and um, uh, the reason I wanted you to be on our show today, um, Adam, is um, because um, when we have clients, when we have um, patients that uh, we have to help them, and you know it's with end of life, uh, we face ourselves a lot of issues dealing with uh, with their families and and with the, with the person uh, that's going through um, end life. Uh, so one of the problems is the because you know when when we have to take them on service, one of the uh, the, the the consent forms and the, some one of some some of the forms that they have to sign is one of them is do you have a power of attorney? Um, um, I, I've told my viewers, and we talked about this so many times, that how important it is, and it's, it's, it's a requirement by Medicare, it's a requirement by the government, that, that people have their power of attorney, they have their advanced directives. Uh, we'll talk more about that, so you'll, you can tell us more about that, you know, what is an advanced directive and what is a power of attorney. Um, so why is it important for them to have this planned before the day comes? And as, as we know, you know, for every one of us, you know, I have parents myself, you know, all of us where we have parents and even us, it has to come that point in our life that we have to make decisions. And when people have states, when people have money in the bank, they have, you know, um, they, they need to make these decisions. And one of the things um, uh, is, 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 is a requirement is to make decisions like for the DNR or for the polls or, or, or advanced directives. Um, so um, that's why that's the reason I wanted you to come to our show so we can talk about and we can educate our viewers why is it important for them to retain an attorney to to talk about these things before or for example um, when we have when we take a patient on service uh, and when there is end life you know everybody's confused every everybody is you know there there is there's sometimes there is a chaos in the family because people don't know what to do it's it's con they're confused and one of the things that we find out that there's no funeral arrangements so so these are things that have to be done in advance so people don't face this kind of problems because if if they don't have if they haven't done their homework at the last minute they make wrong decisions uh, they make mistakes and that's why we're trying to help them um, so as we were talking, um, as I was talking with you um, about the things that we want to talk about in, for example, let's start with advanced directives. What is an advanced directives and why is it important for people to have that? An advanced directive, as you uh, mentioned, is something you really want to do in advance. That's an advanced. Advance, yes. And in California, we call it the uh, advanced health directive where you can designate who's going to make decisions for you when you can't make them for yourself. And you can do some neat things with an advanced directive mm -hmm. that help out your family, your loved ones, and yourself. You can say in there, when I pass away, here's my funeral instructions. Mm -hmm. Here's the uh, post-death authority I'm granting to my agent to make these decisions for me. So you can make those arrangements ahead of time. Mm -hmm. If you haven't made any, then your agent could go and make the post-death uh, decisions. Are you going to be buried in a traditional burial? Is it going to be a cremation? Is there going to be a special service? Have you paid for this through a society of some type? All those things can be mentioned or it can be left to the discretion of the agent. Okay. There, there's other decisions that can be made in a health care directive. When you reach that end of life time mm -hmm. where we really don't think anyone's going to recover, do they want their life prolonged, or do they want the machines turned off and let's see what happens? Mm -hmm. Organ donation, designating doctors, making decisions about pain management, certain type of treatments people might not want. They may say, I don't, uh, I don't want the tube put down mm -hmm. my throat. Yes. I don't want CPR anymore. And if that's the case, they can fill these things out in an advanced directive. There are also some other documents you mentioned, the DNR, the Pulse. The Pulse, yeah. Well, Pulse and those is, all work together. Yes. Pulse is a requirement, um, uh, and this, this just became a um, final requirement. And it, it's in a pink paper, and it's a special kind of paper. And hospitals and uh, hospices, you know, we have to have that in the document. Um, and, and then one thing that I wanted to ask you, uh, from, from my background, you know, being in managed care for so long, when I used to work on the managed care side, um, 
it was a required it became a requirement that uh, for for doctors at least for the HMOs they were requiring doctors to talk to their patients about advanced directives 18 and up before it was 65 and up but now it's it's 18 and up so even if you're 18 and up you have to your doctor has to talk to you about because what if I uh, get out and I was in a, in, a, in a car accident so I need to make I need to have that in my file so in case something happens to me what decisions I want people to make for me or, or what are my wishes. That's right. right. One of the uh, first things that will happen if you're admitted to a hospital or hospice care anywhere is where's the advanced directive? Mm -hmm. Where's that power of attorney? Yes. One mistake some people make is they keep those power of attorney documents in their safe deposit oh. box yes. where no one can get it. Exactly. So you can make copies of this and you can give it ahead of time to your health care provider, to your doctor, yes. to your hospice so that they have it when you're admitted, it's already on file, and then they can go ahead with the care, mm -hmm. and if something happens to you, they can talk to your agent. And, and uh, I've seen, you know, most of the times when we take patients on service, at least for hospice, and especially if they're in a nursing home, um, and um, if, if there is no power of attorney, if the patient doesn't have anybody, no family member, there has to be power of attorney, nothing can be done. And then if there is nobody, then you have to have the abundsman office, you have to get a government service that has to come to the nursing home and that somebody has to be present from the government for that person to sign that power of attorney. So it just creates a lot of problems for everyone and it delays the care for the person. So that's why these things are um, very, very important for people that's to right. understand about advanced directives and the polls. Um, I had some, um, I had um, guest uh, physicians a cardiologist who came and we talked about the CPR mm -hmm. and they talked about that in depth you know what is it um, DNR what is it you know if you um, if you choose um, a full code uh, the difference between that and they were they were explaining that okay. but the bottom line is for people to understand because at the end of the end of the day it's their decision That's right. patient can be on hospice but patient can still say you know it might be 80 year old person hospice patient but patient can say yes I want full code you know, so it, it's what the patient wants. I want that. This is the reason I wanted uh, for you to be our guest so we can educate our, pe our people and we can let them know that they need to make decisions for themselves before anybody else does. That's why it's important for them to see an attorney, uh, talk to an attorney and, and make these decisions. Um, so durable power of attorney, is it the same as advanced directives or? These terms are used interchangeably a lot. Mm -hmm. When people say power of attorney, they might mean health care power of attorney. That's really the advanced directive. Mm -hmm. Or power of attorney over finances, over financial mm -hmm. matters. So the, the durable power of attorney is usually referring to financial matters, bank accounts, mm -hmm. stocks, bonds, financial mm -hmm. institutions, mm -hmm. even dealing with medical care providers, the insurance side, the billing side, mm -hmm. government entities. But it's very important to have a financial power of attorney in place so that someone, if something happens to you or your loved ones, they can step in and make those decisions for them. They can deal with the insurance provider on why weren't these claims recognized? Why am I paying for this? How can I get access to this bank account so we can pay the bills? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what a power of attorney can help them to do, amongst other things. Okay, and um, another thing that it's very important, you know, if they have trust, trust for their grandchildren, right? If, if, if the grandparents have a trust, is that, is that included in the, in the power of attorney or advanced directives, or that's a different will that they have to do? So we talked a little bit about this. A, a trust is really a separate entity from mm -hmm. the health care directive or the power of attorney. Then we have a trust. Mm -hmm. And what a trust does is it takes title to an asset, like a bank account might be in the name of a trust, or a home could be in the name of a trust. So for many grandparents, they say, we want to take care of our grandkids, but we want to make sure this money is used in a certain way. Mm -hmm. We don't want it used for fast cars and partying. We want it for education and health care. So they can set aside money in a trust, a grandparent's trust, maybe it's called a gifting trust, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the benefit of their grandchildren. And that's a very common thing they do. Great. Uh, and uh, if you have, uh, for example, if we have, if the, if the person has um, a state and bank accounts and all that, and, but there's no will, there's no um, advanced directives, no power of attorney. 
but uh, one of the loved ones, let's say a grandchild, is taking care of that person. Now, when it comes like end life, can that person, without um, having that power of attorney, sign documents for, for that person, for the grandparent? Or they, they, they really have to have that piece of paper that says, I give authority to my grandchild to make decisions for me or for my bank accounts, for my state and all of that. That's right. Legally, they need that document, mm -hmm. that power of attorney, or if there's a trust, they need to be mm -hmm. named as the trustee to sign those documents. I think some people sign them without those, but they really shouldn't do that. Okay. It should have a power of attorney. Because um, with our Armenian culture, um, you know, everything, people, we take things very emotionally. Uh, we take it to our heart and, and we think that, oh, it's my grandchild or it's my aunt or it's my uncle. And, um, and they need to realize that this is uh, America and there are laws. And <laughs> so, so we really have to um, have these documents in place because if, if somebody has that, um, you know, uh, bank accounts or a home under their name, that will become a problem. So it's very important for people to to talk to an attorney, which I highly recommend Mr. Adam Becker, <laughs> uh, because um, uh, he's very, um, one thing that, you know, uh, there, there's so many attorneys, Adam, but uh, just working with you and knowing you and your abilities, and of course, you know, we have a couple of clients that, that we share mm, together. Nice. Uh, it's just, you know, your support even, uh, being a power of attorney, I've seen how supportive you were, you know, with, with our hospice patients. And I never felt that, um, you know, um, I, I always I had that understanding that, you know, I can give you a call and ask you for a favor or, or we, can, we can talk about <laughs> You've it. You've been very nice. Um, <laughs> what, is a, what is a living trust? Um, I, I hear so much about that uh, but because I want to know myself because, you know, I have kids, two kids of my own. So there are the terms living trust, and sometimes mm -hmm. we also heard, hear the term living will. These are different things. Mm -hmm. uh, a living trust is really a trust that you set up during your lifetime for the, it could be for the benefit of yourself to be taken care of. And then when you pass away, we'll have directions in that trust uh, for how your assets should be disposed of. Mm -hmm. A living will we hear about all the time, that's closer to the health care directive. So in California, we don't mm -hmm. say a living will as much. Uh, really, in other states, they use the term living will, although it's just fine to say that. The living will is, how is my person going to be taken care of if I can't make those decisions myself, my medical decisions? Mm -hmm. Trust is taking care of me and my assets financially. I see. Uh, and if the person is uh, terminally ill, but the person doesn't have any advanced directives or doesn't have any power of attorney, uh, but uh, the, their, their family wants to make one, so um, that, does that person have to be present, signing all the documents, of course, because you need the signature? Um, well, that's, that's one of the services you know, we provide. As estate planning attorneys, mm -hmm. I feel it's our job if somebody's sick and they are dying and they're of sound mind, they can make decisions, they can sign, then they can, uh, at the end of life, put down on paper the things that they want done after they've passed away. And we can work with them and the family at this point to make sure that gets done so everyone knows, okay, here's what's going to happen. This is going to help us perhaps avoid probate. Mm -hmm. avoid fights in the family. Mm -hmm. It creates order. You mentioned chaos a few times. Yes. Who's I've, in charge? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the one that cleans things up and, and hands things out after somebody's passed away in an orderly way? It's less expensive and so that the family uh, feels taken care of and provided for by their parents in the way they'd want. Yeah. Uh, that, like I said, that's one of the reasons that um, I was thinking because I'd bring in different guests and I said, well, I should have an attorney specialized in this area because when I walk into the room and because I just got a call from a physician that I have to go see a, a patient and then as soon as I walk into the room the first five minutes if, if there is nothing if there's no homework has been done I see that there is it's, it's not a good picture because people are confused uh, who's going to take care of this patient what's going to happen uh, if the patient's going to a nursing home who's signing for the patient and if the patient has uh, bank accounts or, or sometimes, you know, there is no funeral arrangements met, made. Mm. So, so that's why when I said chaos, that's, that, that's, that's when the problems arise. And, and the, the, the problem is that, you know, it makes our, our job harder because we can't help them. We can start the care, 
because there is um, no documents in place. Um, nobody knows who's going to make a decision for, for that patient. I, and um, a lot of the times, you know, at least for the, with the Armenian culture, I see that, you know, uh, even if somebody in the, in the room, they say, oh, I'll sign for them. And I tell them, no, this is very important document because what happens is when we get audited by joint commission, by, you know, higher um, government agencies, when they come, the first thing they look at in the chart, they always ask us, who is the person that signed for the patient? If the patient was unable to sign, and if, 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 if it's a different person, and they will tell us, where is the power of attorney? Where is the advanced directives? So um, I, I am by the book person. <laughs> uh, I go by the rules. Um, actually, I'm a paralegal myself. Oh, I used okay. to be a paralegal, uh, but I ended up in the healthcare. But I think you know uh, uh -huh. my, uh, my skills are, are helping me a little bit. Uh, that's why I educate my uh, community, um, our people, so they understand more. Um, and, and you're right, it should be, you know, we have a tendency to think, I'll do this when I need to do it. Yes. Well, it might be too late. Yes. So the sooner you get it done and you have these things in place, you don't have to worry about it. Because in your situation, you are dealing with people who, for whatever reason, they don't have these documents in place. And it makes it very difficult when we've waited too long to get someone in charge who can make decisions. And sometimes there's nothing we can do if the person is too far gone, uh, they can't sign things and they can't express their wishes and then it becomes very difficult. The government, uh, someone's going to have to be there or we may have to go to court mm -hmm. in order to get somebody appointed who can then step in and make decisions. That's expensive and it takes time. Exactly. And it becomes a public record, right? And everybody, yeah, everybody. Have, and, that's right. Uh, privacy yeah. issues. As privacy well. issues, yes, and all that. Uh, one thing that I was reading a document um, from the healthcare professional. Uh, there is something about five wishes uh, that I know with some cancer patients, um, because I, I have some people that they're cancer patients. They called me because their provider said that you need to fill this out, and they're young people. And and one of the questions is, you know, if if something happens to you. What is your last wish? So it looks like this is becoming a healthcare uh, general. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're an old person or if you're a young person. This is for everyone, for everyone to understand, to make decisions. It's just that the difference that I see with my culture, with Armenians, you know, when we're young, we say we're not going to die. Nothing's going to happen to us. But someone like me being in healthcare, and I'm sure you being an attorney, we see this. This is reality. This is real life. And... Um, so we have to face this. So that's why to know about these things in advance, I think it's you make better decisions at the end. You make wise decisions than if you don't know. So that person um, who called me and asked me, said, RP, my, um, my cancer, my oncologist gave me this paper and it was um, um, given by one of her medical groups that she had to fill it out. It's about the five wishes. So, um, do you know anything about that, or it's it's just it's probably it's more more healthcare related. I, um, I know the the term five wishes, but I'm not familiar with what the f okay. what the questions are. The questions are, you know, they're they're mostly um, because you know she I talked to her over the phone. It's just like you know what would you what what is your last wish if if you're terminally ill and you're going to die? What you know do you want to say anything to your family, or what is your last wish? Uh, or even like funeral arrangements. And I know that, you know, people, um, when peop when you're young and somebody asks you these questions, you're, you know, when, when I had my first child, it was funny that um, I had somebody came to my house from Forest Lawn and they wanted to sell me um, um, uh -huh. funeral pot. Funeral pot. And I got, I cried. And I said, you know, I just had a baby and, you know, somebody's here in my house and they're trying to sell me this. This guy's from Forest Lawn. I told him, I said, I don't want to die. But then when I think about it today, I was, I'm laughing and I'm t telling to myself, you know, um, maybe I, I should have thought about that because that, that's an investment you make. You know, you, you, you buy a place and, and every, every day, you know, the value goes up, right? Uh, this, is, this is really very interesting, uh, um, um, Adam. So what else, what else can we tell our viewers that um, they well, can... Something similar to what you just mentioned is we will say to our clients... Um, I think this is what the five wishes is getting at. If they can write a letter mm -hmm. to their beneficiaries telling them simple things like, here's the bank accounts that I have. Here's where I keep the golf clubs. <laughs> here's the key to the safe deposit box. This is my accountant. This is my attorney. 
these are my wishes. These are things I'd like the family to do at the, whether it's a celebration of life or funeral, cremation. And then the family has some direction. It's not a legally binding letter necessarily. It doesn't force anyone. But it expresses their desire for what they want the family to do when they've passed away. And it puts important information mm -hmm. somewhere that they can easily find it so they're not hunting. Where did dad keep that key to the safe deposit box? You know what, that's a good point you brought up because I had a patient, I, the patient was in a nursing home and the patient was dying and the sons, the, the wife, they have no idea where he kept his documents. They and hide it so well, there, no one knows. You're right, there was an advanced directive, there was uh, uh -huh. the, the, the bank, um, the key for the bank a safe. Uh, but they had no idea where things was, and you don't. I mean, it was like a disaster. So they were trying to find out, but uh, you know, he was terminally ill. He could not even hear them what they were saying. So that's a very good um, point that you brought up. That people need to write that letter. I want to write that letter today when I go home <laughs> oh, good. And, and give it to my kids, so so they know. Good. You know, other things people could do would be uh, to make sure on their, if they have life insurance, if they have mm -hmm. retirement accounts. IRAs, that beneficiaries are named. A lot of times somebody dies and so they've inherited an IRA or, or some type of retirement account and they haven't filled out their own beneficiaries. I see. Make sure those are up to date. Make sure on your bank accounts, if they're not in a trust, that somebody is a signer, somebody can help access those. Make sure you have a power of attorney uh, so somebody can get to those to pay for the bills. I see. Well, um, David, uh, time flew. I think it came to an end. Uh, it was very nice to have you. I think we'll have you again one more time. Um, thank you thank for you having so me. Much for coming. I've enjoyed uh, it. What is? Uh, do you want to say anything to our viewers? Um, you know, your just anything you want to tell them. There's a lot of things you can do on your own on the internet. You don't always need an attorney. You know, for a health care directive, mm -hmm. there are simple wills out there. But if you have more complicated situations or you just have questions then a, an attorney would be somebody you should contact. They'd be happy to speak with you uh, and answer any of your questions and get things in order so you don't have to worry about this. Thank you so much, David, and uh, thank you for your time, and definitely we'll have you again. Sreli Barekamner, Shnorak Alutyun, Zeru Shadrutyan Hamar. Menk khostanu menk, vor menk norits kunenak bavakani lav hyurer, inch pes menk kunenin kaisor mer hyure. Khantru menk mes hetevek mer hagortum nerin, yev pantrek mes noraliki yeterum, shnorak alutyun.